Hello and welcome to another episode of Superpowers. Uh, today I'm very excited because we have co-host Jane Sibbett here again today. And joining us is Moss Sajadi. And Moss is truly an extraordinary story. Uh, he had two near-death experiences in his lifetime. And as a result of those, he's been gifted with uh, amazing healing abilities and well, we call him a, a transformational catalyst because it, it's hard to really put him into any one uh, category. But he works with people on a core spirit frequency level and is able to make adjustments that help people uh, get through various challenges that they're having in their lives, whether they be physical or emotional or relationship-based. And um, wonderful man and a, a great healing gift he has. And so I'd love to just jump right in and say hello to Moss and say hello to Jane. Hello, Jane. Aloha, Carl. How are you? I'm good. How are you? Great. Thank you so much for having us on. And I want to say hi to Moss. Hi, Moss. Hi, Carl. How are you guys? You guys both look fantastic today. Thank you. Doing really? pretty awesome. Yeah, awesome. So I want to, I, Jane, I want to just jump right in because I know that Moss has something really super exciting coming up um, really soon. And why don't you tell us a little bit about that? And then I want to jump to all the really cool stuff that Moss has to tell us about what's going on right now. So um, real quick, just tell us about the event that's coming up. Uh, well, Moss is coming to the Big Island first and then over to Kauai. He's coming here on October 5th. And we have this adventure retreat that we're going to be swimming with the dolphins. We're going to go up to the top of Mauna Kea and connect up there with the stars and have a little hike up there. And beyond the adventure aspect of the retreat, Moss is going to be talking to us a lot about the transitions that are happening right now and connecting us to his pure source energy that is so amazing. Yes. And Moss, you had shared recently that there had been a huge... Um, surge or, or wave as you called it of energy that's coming in so i think that this retreat seems to be well timed for that oh i think it's perfect because uh, a lot of people are in a time of transition you know this wave that's coming through is magnifying everything so being on top of the wave obviously it's going to be a better place to be so helping you get to that top is uh you know it'd be a fantastic opportunity and, and, you know, along with the adventure side, we're going to have a lot of, say, not in classroom, but just uh, kick back, relax type uh, talks, meditations as well. So if you're not the active type, right. we've and got something for both. That's right, because not everybody wants to go down and swim with the dolphins. And yeah, exactly. Even though it's magnificent or a Mauna Kea. <clears throat> yeah, every day when we we're doing these retreats, we also have that opportunity to go back to that Halle um, next to Spencer Beach. And we'll be right there, right next to the ocean, where Moss is going to be working with us. And when, and Moss, when you work with us, I know that when you speak, you're you are sharing the frequency the entire time, aren't you? Yes. Um, in fact, uh, anybody listening to this conversation um, will start feeling something. And if not, is I'm still working on you. But people who are sensitive, let's say, will feel something. So yes, I'm working on you all the time. So hey, Moss. Uh, I, I'm sorry, yes. Jane. Um, yeah, I just wanted, I wanted to, to go back to a thought um, real huh? quick just for, for the people um, like myself who are not sensitive, who don't, <clears throat> feel, uh, mm -hmm. who don't feel things as they're, as they're going on and, and this wave of energy that, that's coming through right now. Um, are there any, like it, it, say you don't sense it in your body um, necessarily or you just don't pick it up, any other sorts of signs or ways that somebody might just uh, get clued into things that are going on and have a sense of what is happening? Sure. Sure. Um, you know, uh, you might see people around you acting differently or maybe a little more tense or a little more aggressive. Um, I hate to put it in this uh, in this t context, but you know how, say, like animals or especially cockroaches, they get antsy when something's about to happen? <laughs> do cockroaches get antsy? I didn't know that. I they actually do. <laughs> and I didn't, didn't want to liken people to cockroaches. <laughs> it's but, happened before. <laughs> in a sense, that's what people do. Right. Uh, they get antsy. So you'll start to see a lot of things. Uh, a lot of questioning, especially like you say in relationships or in situations that you're in, 
right? So if you don't feel it, you'll still see people around you and even yourself, although you might not feel it internally, like, hey, there's something going on, you're going to be starting thinking about, hey, is this the right timing for me? Am I doing things right? Um, am I in the right relationships? All that. Yeah. Would you, would you say right now, just in general, and this again is for, um, you know, people just getting to know you, just coming in, yes. um, mm -hmm. that this particular time where we are in our journey through space uh, is one of kind of accelerated growth and transformation for people? Uh, it actually is, uh, you know, just kind of scanning back. And, and by the way, if you when you the way my abilities work, if you ask me a question, I tap into that knowledge base that's out there for everybody. It's not my concepts, or it's not like I don't I didn't read this from anybody. But uh, just kind of tapping in, um, yes, this is the most opportune time that's ever been around in this phase. This phase has never come. Uh, we've never come, say, a complete circle. Um, so this is totally brand new. Uh, really time of awakening and even individuals you know like uh, like Jesus or Buddha or any of those people have never say gone into these levels before because well they weren't available at that time so it's very new for almost well everybody and everything spiritual and living so now I actually want to back up even further okay. <laughs> and, and I want to just go from um, Jane, I think you, I saw that you have an idea too, so just hold that because I may not, I may not go to where you're going to go. But yeah. um, uh, and I just want to go on the assumption that there will be people um, in our audience that are watching right now who may not know um, who you are, Moss. Um, okay. So um, uh, I would love just a just a little background about you. Um, okay. Just quickly, and then and and how how you came to these gifts that you sure. have, and um, and I will say that I I believe what we settled on for you um, as a categorized term that we can put a box we can put you into. I think you liked uh, transformational catalyst best of everything that we threw out. <laughs> um, transformational catalyst now an oracle. Well, yeah. Oh great! Oh, I like that too. Okay. Yeah. So, so basically. How, 30 second elevator pitch. Is, awesome. Um, I've had two, well, through two near death experiences, I've been given um, fantastic abilities to help you transform uh, in any area of your life, whether it's spiritual, physical, relationships, uh, wealth, uh, anything that's under that we can create as humans, I can help you edit, transform. Um, I've helped thousands of people all over the world with uh, amazing, amazing results. Um, the Oracle part comes in. Um, you know, back in the days, and even now, you know, corporations still use some sort of intuitive, you know, the the, the open type CEOs or um, owners. They um, back in the day, you know, kingdoms, uh, people of wealth, they used somebody to uh, see foresee the future as well as seeing the past. I am similar to that. The only difference is that I am actually given that ability to edit. Edit, delete, transform, like futures or uh, anything that's happened in the past that helps you transform your future space. And and this is my last one, Jane. And, um, and this is just <laughs> okay. for uh, okay, for clarity. Um, and as I understand um, from having seen you before, that mm -hmm. you're doing this work. Um, on, on a frequency level, um, as you describe it, and really at sort of a core spirit level. And um, can yes. you talk just a little bit about that real quick? So I just want sure. people to be up to speed with, you know, kind of okay. who you are and what you're able to do. Okay. Yeah. Um, well, let me kind of explain how, how I see frequencies and where people are, and that will give you a truer definition. So you have the physical density of like human form and that's where you know like western medicine uh chiropractors uh, massage medicines prescription surgeries things like that uh exercise that's where that lies then you go up a step and in that realm that middle realm there is like intuitive psychics energy healers and most of us most of say healers that are out there they they we exist in this area uh chakras uh again energy systems um, uh, yeah, uh, and then you skip a couple steps and you go into the fifth layer, sixth layer, 
and that's where I am. And very few individuals. I don't know anybody else out here. I'm sure there's somebody though. Um, anyway, at that level, you start you start producing or you start creating or editing at a core level frequency or at what your spirit has created your life. So that's that's why people get say phenomenal or uh, fast changes because it is at the top level that you're editing or changing. Okay. Mm -hmm. Great. Thank you. You bet. So, uh, and Carl, just to just give you an anecdotal, um, and for our, our, our pe the people that are watching, I can't say listeners because we actually have a camera today, but um, for, for my mom, she was in terrible, terrible pain. She had a problem with her neck, and she couldn't hold her head up, as you know, and, um, and it had been getting worse and worse and worse and worse, and she was in so much pain that she was crying out. She'd gone to the doctors. The doctors had said and told her at 85 years old that she needed to risk surgery, that the only, her only hope, and, they, and it wouldn't even relieve any pain, but the only hope that she could ever have her neck back was if they fused all the bones together. Wow. And when I had gone to, to see mom, um, and I called up Moss, and I just said, is there anything that you can do for her? She couldn't even get on the phone because she was in, was in so much pain. And so he began working on her through me. And I would say probably within a week, um, she started to, to, to be able to hold her head up, even sooner actually after that. But she went to, actually got worse. It got more intense pain as the night went on. And then, um, well, I guess, I think it was about two weeks later that she had an appointment with the doctor and the same exact surgeon said to her, no, you're about 95%, I wouldn't recommend surgery. So it was like this radical change that they couldn't that my that my niece couldn't believe it and and mom couldn't believe that this was the same surgeon saying she didn't need surgery anymore. And this is something that just doesn't repair on its own. It was degenerative. Her her spine had gotten so bad. So Moss, what did what can you tell me what you did for her? Well, I don't know the exact science behind yeah. it all cuz you know our 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 intelligence is 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 very limited yeah. to what's out there, right. uh, but to the closest thing, you know, anything that's created in this physical form or density, I call it, is is really a frequency that creates. Just like, for example, Carl, you're probably familiar. Any color has certain frequencies that right. creates or generates that color, or anything. Um, you know, if you look at the periodical charts, you know, uh, aluminum, gold, whatever, has a certain frequency or a certain density. We are actually originators of that; those frequencies. We can create anything that we wish. So, in say her neck, um, you know, there's a certain frequency of degeneration. But what if you could say delete that frequency of degeneration and instill, say, a newer form or a youthful frequency that she had once before, and then that will generate, you know, a new, a new outcome for her. And there's been studies on this, a lot of psychological studies, uh, where people have transformed uh, immediately. You know, where people have had, say, diabetes, and then they go switch into another personality, and there's no signs of diabetes. Right. Yeah. Here's a question for you, just uh, out of my own curiosity on the uh, on the frequency level, um, and. You know, I'm going to jump into your uh, computer programming language just for a second sure. because, um, because uh, it just makes a lot of sense. So um, when you're doing that and you're changing the frequency, do we mm -hmm. have within us, say, like an innate operating system that works best with specific frequencies that when the correct one is reintroduced to that operating system, it will work really well? Um, if we try to do something that maybe isn't as c compatible, we may not see the same kind of results. Uh, I'm just curious about, uh, you know, all the levels yes. on how that might work. Yeah, and I call that the frequency signature, actually. And, and, you know, what that is, everybody, yes, we're all the same. But, you know, we all have our own um, uh, idiosyncrasies, all that, that. And that's what makes us us, and that's what makes us beautiful. Um, yes, yeah, so there are, say, general frequencies that I can help you instill, you know, like frequencies of wealth. There are certain habits that no matter what flavor you are, you know, those habits still pertain to wealth. So in that sense, yes. But you can create any type of frequency and then create the results of those frequencies as well. 
So if some people say like, um, what, no pain, no gain, right? right? Or you have to work really, really hard, right, to create wealth, right? right. There's a there's a frequency of that, and that's what's going to happen for you. But if you truly believe that, you know, that uh, working um, working easily or effortlessly and then creating wealth, you can create that rule set for you, and that's the frequencies that generate. And there's lots of people like that as well, that they don't have to work as hard, but they have that massive amount of wealth. Well, let's or, talk about that then. So let's uh -huh. say you're somebody... Sorry, okay. <laughs> that does <laughs> that does feel like that you have to work really, really hard, you know, yes. to, to generate mm -hmm. money. Um, yes. And that does work for you. You work really, really hard, and you are generating money. Um, but let's talking about you, right? No, I'm not talking about me. No, because okay. yeah, you just work really but hard. But let's just say for hypothetically, okay. Just so, hypothetically. But let's say you know what? I'd like to <laughs> to generate more money than I am, but work way, way, way less hard. So now is there a way that that, that belief system can effectively be shifted so that that would work? Oh, yeah, it happens all the time with people I work with. Or, um, as get, by the way, guys, anything that I can do, you can do on your own. I just do it much faster for you. It's kind of like that, you know, your kid. You know, you might be uh, struggling on the computer for hours and hours and then goes, hey, Dad, what are you doing? It's like, oh, I'm trying to do this. It's like, well, let me do it for you. And, you know, it's like a couple mouse clicks and boom, they're done, right? <laughs> yeah. Is that the way it works? So basically, I'm that spirit geek that goes, hey, let me just show you how to do it. Spirit geek. Okay. You're a spirit wonk. That's what yeah, you're there you go. <laughs> um, but yes, I've transformed a lot of individuals. You know, a lot of that actually comes from your lineage you know, your parents and so on, uh, that that just just uh, drive it into us. And then we see them doing it, and then we see ourselves, as, oh, that's the way we have to make money or, you know, live our lives is work really, really hard um, and not feel even deserving on top of that while we're working hard and then not make a lot of money. It might be you, actually, Carl, just kind of reading into you. Uh, Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> you just can adjust that any time you want. Mom. Yeah. On. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so, we can fix that uh, while we're while we're doing this. That'd be awesome. <laughs> yeah. You can't do that. But sorry about that. <laughs> um, but yes, I mean, those are the kind of frequencies that say run in us. But those frequencies aren't true. They're not accurate. You can put in or instill a truer frequency of who you are, and then that that starts replacing, and that's how you start the living. Uh, in a different format. Right. Carlos? Yes. Okay, you're still there. You're absorbing. I, well, I am absorbing. I, I didn't want to jump in too fast again with the next one in case you had something that you were going to jump in with. So. Well, I know this is all great. I mean, I love when Moss is bringing this on. It's Moss, when you were talking to us about any subject, mm -hmm. literally, though, all of these frequencies that we're we're trying to work on it's not like you're just working on one frequency unless you focus it on just right. financial abundance but right. right now this this the frequency that you're bringing in right now can work in a myriad ways yes like yes. Well, um well and and, and 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 that's why i say people who hang around me um and you know people want to say like change the world you know the best way to really change the world is really to change yourself come into a higher space of yourself. So when you walk around or when you're talking to somebody, they start to see the trueness of you. In fact, we just did a session on um, uh, being authentic, you know, that authentic self that comes out. You know, when you're that authentic, it's just amazing how people transform around you. Um, so that's the frequency that I bring in, the frequency of trueness. And then that envelops like everybody that's listening in. It could be a recording or you could listen to this over and over. And that's what you're feeling in that brain. We all came from that purity space. Um, and once you do that, um, so, you know, some of the issues that you think that you have just start to fall away. That's all. Well, and speaking of that, we do have a few guests today that would love okay. to um, to experience you. And uh, sure, a couple have never met you before, and okay. you might have one or two that have. And so, I'd love, if it's okay with you, Carl, to invite one in right now, if that's all right. That's great. Yeah, let's uh, let's do. Okay, so I'm gonna 
bring in Marta. Okay, so now we are going to jump to a Skype call, and we have a friend of Jane's, Marta Barreras. I think that's right. Yes, Marta. And yes. Um, so Marta is going to uh, have a, a little session here with Moss, and we'll just jump right in. So, hello, Marta. Hi, aloha. Aloha. Hey, it's good to talk to you. And for our audience to know that she's also um, in a cottage right now above Kealakekua Bay, which is a very beautiful and powerful sacred spot on the island of Hawaii, where we're going to be for our retreat as well. Yes. So, Moss, I'd like to, and Moss, I'd like to introduce you to Marta. Marta to Moss. Hi, how are you, hon? Hi, Moss. I'm very, I'm very happy to be here. Thank you. Well, thank you for being here. Um, so should we just start? Um, and, and again, you know, since uh, we've been kind of sitting here, I've been kind of noting what goes on because I can't, again, I can't turn it off or anything. Um, you know, you've got uh, like fantastic abilities, Marta, but sometimes they distort you because you come from a physical form or physical essence. So you don't really, um, it's kind of like a glass ceiling for you. You know, again, fantastic abilities. Um, you probably have come from a lineage of people with fantastic abilities, from what I'm sensing. Um, but that knowledge is limited to, say, the physical form of this planet. And maybe that's why you're so good at what you do. I'm not exactly sure on what you do. Um, but does that does that make sense to you so far? Um, well, I'm, I'm very happy to move past any limitations. My mm -hmm. intention is to bridge form and spirit. So... Okay. And maybe that's why you're here, um, because there is, or maybe you're sensing, and like I said, maybe that's why you're here. You're sensing that there is, say, higher opportunities. And and by the way, Carl, that this is that transition or that wave that we were talking about before. People are going from the physical form, so people with fantastic abilities, um, and I, and I know quite a few actually people, fantastic abilities, very popular, very famous, and yet they're seeing some sort of distortion that their gifts or abilities aren't, say, up to par anymore or not that great, or they're seeing the opportunities that are lying awake or uh, awaiting them. And that, and I think that's where you are, right? and that's why you're here. Um, so bridging that gap for you, I can help you open that up for you. Okay, There's a space right by your necklace, just a little above that, that I see kind of keeps you uh, locked down to this physical not exactly sure I mean we can go back in time and kind of see what's going on but I'd actually like to spend the time uh, sealing that hole up removing anything that's there um, uh, for those people who don't know when I see people I see frequencies I don't I don't see like your physical form although you're here I see what creates you uh, and right in that area, it, again, it's kind of a hole that just binds you and keeps you like planted to this earth. And that's why you can't say ascend higher. Um, <clears throat> and correct me if I'm wrong, but there's also this sense of um, anxiety or maybe a little tension in you right now. Uh, maybe it's a little uncomfortable or even uh, coming up to this moment in time. Um, and it's not being, say, on camera or anything like that, but actually um, it's part of that spirit or part of that, uh, what I call a pain body, kind of like in your own space. Um, and, it's, and it knows at some level that it needs to leave or get deleted somehow, and that's what you're sensing. So you might feel uncomfortable now. Uh, or you, you might have been even nervous before, um, and you'd probably get nervous after this as well, uh, which is totally fine. Again, that's all that old stuff leaving you. So your new awakening can come through. How are you feeling right now? You might not feel anything. Most people do, but that's okay if you don't, um, especially in that chest, throat area. Um, is it this side? Moss, that you're referring to, the side kind of, of my throat and chest? Yeah, it's kind of, yeah, um, just a little more to the center, perhaps, it's, it kind of, but it radiates out. Okay. Yes, so, uh, just kind of tapping in. Um, do you have some physical issues there, 
issue or? Uh, I don't have any physical issues, Moss, but I, I have had um, feelings of energy mm -hmm. um, block <clears throat> here yes. from time to time that I work with. I okay. mean, um, it's more on this side. Yeah. Um, it it kind of comes from that side. And then it's, uh, are you guys familiar with the black holes? You know how black holes work? Mm -hmm. They just like suck everything in. So a lot of energy does come from that side for you, yes, but then it pulls into that hole and it sucks like everything into that hole, just like similar to a black hole. Um, and, and that's what you're feeling, yes. It, it, it does pull everything into you. Um, so let's, let's just kind of seal that up for you. And if you can see something, I don't know, if you can see my hands or not, um, uh, I use it not to say change. Um, well, I, I change frequencies, but I don't move say energy, or like the physical energies. It's actually like a higher level programming that I do for you. But that's um, going back in your lineage too. I'm getting so much information, so I kind of jump around. Sorry, guys. Um, there's also like a tribe that kind of stands behind you as well. Does that make sense to you? Yes, very much so. Yeah, and you connect with them. Uh, almost like a dozen people or elders or whatever you name them. Um, right? Do you want to tell, I don't know what you do exactly, <laughs> so <laughs> if you want to tell the audience what you do, but it is, um, uh, so that it might define for me as well. Well, I'm um, the label that I've been using is I'm a feng shui master, but really I, I help people align their lives so that they can manifest their purpose and their dreams, really, in the world. So I am working with spirit and form, mm -hmm. um, and I'm happy, really grateful. If you see any blocks um, to spirit in that work, with whatever we can do to clear that. Yes, um, in, in what you do, again, feng shui of physical space, directing energies through physical space, um, using crystals or whatever it might be, again, using the physical form. Um, but you're tapping into and you're starting to realize, and those elders, we'll just call them elders, if that's okay with you, yes. that follow you or can help you, um, they're, they've been using that for, I don't know how long, centuries and uh, actually th yeah, thousands of years. Um, they're actually getting, say, upgraded as well, because as I work on you, they're, they're kind of huddling around and actually excited because they've always known, uh, kind of like a prophecy, that there is something higher, but they could never attune to that level. I don't know if you feel it or can you connect with them, Marta? Well, I've been, I've been, I connect with them daily. <laughs> okay. but, uh, I've been feeling the need to step into Exactly, yes. that what feels like a prophecy in a in a um, more powerful way. Yes, um, and so they're excited. I don't know if you can tap into them now, um, but they're excited about this whole, I guess, arrangement as well, because because um, as you say, ascend higher. I can work on the, that whole space or those elders as well in spirit form to help them, say, ascend into those higher levels or higher knowledge. And I know that kind of sounds strange, and it kind of sounds strange to me is like okay they're in spirit form they should know this stuff or they should be able to say be in a higher space than say me a physical form but for some reason there uh i've helped tons of say elders or spirit or spirits of knowledge like ascend to higher forms just like i help people ascend to higher forms i still don't know why they can't do it themselves or you know, in the lower case, uh, people who have crossed over, you know, who have died, and they're still stuck, you know, what religion calls purgatory, I think, in the Catholic religion, they're <clears throat> kind of stuck, so they need me to free them. So I'm going, well, they're in spirit form. Why, you know, why can't they understand that? So I don't understand that aspect of it either, but um, uh, I guess I don't have the knowledge, uh, per se, to understand it. But let's just remove whatever that's needed to allow, you know, your whole group, let's just say. Um, 
And Marty, you're the physical representation of this group. Okay. So we'll help you open up into the higher realms. And you might not feel things here right away. Um, I'm feeling it. Oh, you are? Oh, fantastic. So you're moving a little faster. I was going to say there's going to be a delayed reaction for you because, um, you know, frequencies, because you're so connected to the physical form, uh, there's a time element that comes in. Uh, so uh, you're, you are, or your whole group is a little different. Uh, even your group in spirit form, there is a density that I don't see normally. So you always see or have seen things through, say, the essence of nature or the essence of the physical world. So, And that's why I thought it might be a little delay because there's a time and distance there. But the nice thing is that you're feeling it now, which is beautiful. So you, you'll start to see or you'll start to feel the intricate or the detail of how the physical form that you've been you know, working and helping people with, um, well, are created or is created. Did did that make sense? Well, I'm I'm a little confused, Moss, because um, I I actually work with nature as a way to help people ground from being too yes. disembodied or too spiritual or too mm -hmm. in their head. So um, I've never really felt myself as being attached to form. I grew uh, up in an ashram. <laughs> So, um, um, maybe, from, maybe if you could word things in in a way that I could understand that a little bit more. Sure, sure, yeah. Clarity is always good. <laughs> <laughs> um, yes, uh, let's talk about, say, some of the people who you feel distorted or not in their physical form. Um, you know, when you help them, you actually help them connect into their physical form through the sense of nature, and that actually balances them out. So in, in its truest sense, if we look at it at a deeper level, um, what's happening is that, you know, where they're disembodied or disconnected, that doesn't mean that they're in spirit form or in their truer spirit form. It's a distorted spirit form, and that's why they're there. Okay. Um, if they were, say, truly awakened at that level, they wouldn't need you, really. They can sense who they are, what they are, and then come in and out of their bodies as they please. So, so first of all, one, they don't know that they're at that spirit level, level or disconnected from their form. So, so what you're doing, again, is bringing into, say, a grounding, like you said, and then that regenerates that memory of them being in their truer sense or a truer nature of themselves. Did that make sense for you? It does. And so I'm creating this safe, powerful space where people mm -hmm. can bring that, their spirit and their essence in to the yes. physical plane um, more powerfully. Yes. And so is that maybe what you're sensing that I'm maybe a little bit too attached to that form of creating that safe space? Yes. Now, there's two different levels that we're talking about. One is the teacher-student, and then um, the teacher, and then, say, what's beyond for you, the facilitator of that teacher. Does that make sense? Yes. Okay. So, um, so when you're talking about the people that you've worked on, that's, say, like a different level because you're creating that space. But then how do you create that space, right? Just like, um, again, computer experience, you know, you, you use a program like Word or Skype. We're on Skype, right? Um, and you, we can use it uh, phenomenally, right? We can create a lot of things. But then do we actually know how Skype works, right? All, all the programming behind Skype, right? That technology has eluded us. And that technology of your physical space going into, say, spirit form has eluded you and your group. So that's what you're going into is actually that higher space of, oh, wow, this is how Skype works on the back end, although I can see it, how it works for me. Now, for you? That's what Which I've been is, aiming for. Yes, and yeah. that's a huge, huge difference, don't you think? So, um, it's an expanded 
Yes. It feels like an expanded, and I've been searching for that expanded expression mm -hmm. out yes. from the form of, of what I have been doing very successfully, but it feels yes. like there's an expansion that's yes, being exactly. called for. Exactly, and that's, and that's, I guess, why we're here together. Um, you'll learn and pick up fast, and you'll, see, you'll start to see the intricate details of how you transform, say, the physicalness of this world, um, like uh, Feng Shui. Right? There's energy systems. I don't know about Feng Shui, but just kind of tapping into you. There's certain energy, the way energy moves through things, right? Or creates, was it hallways or pathways, right? Well, Feng Shui is actually like it's based on, um, it's like doing acupuncture on okay. your life. Okay. <laughs> Sounds good. You're, you're opening up the, the, the psycho, the semi physical and energetic pathways mm -hmm. for things to flow. Right. Um, now, you can sense those now, perhaps, but I, I actually see in you that you'll actually see the way those energy systems actually move through. Uh, just to give you a clear example, you know, we have, say, a breeze out comes through, right? Although we can feel it, we can sense it, we can't see it. You actually have given be given the abilities or open up to those abilities of, oh, you can actually see the air moving through rather than feeling and seeing it. Does that make sense to you? So if yeah, the wind was, covered, you'll see how it flows through, right? Mm -hmm. Or generates yes. that pattern. You'll see the feng shui generations of those patterns. And as you move, say, people around or furniture or you know building spaces, whatever it is, you'll actually start to see those patterns come through more visible. Because they are there, have the human capabilities, but it seems like you will. Um, it, it's really interesting, very nice, very beautiful. Actually. Thank you. Okay. How are you feeling? Well, that was actually really, really super cool. And I hate to, <laughs> to jump in, in in the middle, but I think we need to to go to uh, our next guest, um, Beth. So. Um, thank you, Moss, for that, for working with Marta. You are welcome. Thank you, Marta. And what a great um, a gift for Marta, too, as well as other healers that are on and people that yes. are working with energy because you are helping other people help other people. Which Yes, exactly. And, and Marta, you know, you might, uh, what I do is basically help you instill whatever you need because there's nothing else you have to do, but you will get guided on what to do. Um, and your guides will actually help transform as well. Um, they'll transform, so that connection is going to be much more uh, powerful for you. Okay, hon? Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. All right, uh, we'll talk to you soon. So that was very, very cool and really fun, and now we have another guest, um, another friend of Jane's, and this is Beth. And Jane, would you like to introduce Beth real quick? Well, I, I'd like to introduce Beth as a as not only a friend but a wonderful actress and writer and singer um, who has come from Boston and then to New York and, and then now here is on the big island and she is also with her husband Steve and they are here because um, they have something going on in their family that they would love to have Masa's help with so I would just like to hand them straight over we don't um, have a picture of live feed of Beth and Steven right now but <clears throat> but Moss is able to tap into their frequencies so as you can Right now, he's already working. Yeah, most of the time I have my eyes closed anyway, so uh -huh. um, it's okay. <laughs> um, so, Beth, you said yeah. you wanted me to work on somebody through you. Is that is that is that the deal? Yes, please. Okay. I'd like you to work on my uh, father-in-law, father uh, who was sure. just diagnosed <clears throat> with um, a rare form of leukemia. Um, yeah, I was and, something wrong with his blood. Yeah. Okay. Yes. Uh, and, um, it was, a, a, yeah, he was given a very, just, mm -hmm. he was given a short time to, okay. um, to live, but with chemotherapy, they said he could have, um, a little more time. And, um, I would love for you to work on him. He needs healing. Okay. Uh, again, tapping in, uh, through you, Beth, I'll be working on you, your husband, Steve, right? Uh, I can work on them, uh, on you too, as well as working <clears throat> on your father-in-law, but just tapping into your father-in-law. Uh, 
you know, his life has always been like stressful. There's always this sense of angst, you know, and like never completely say satisfied or happy or um, something. You know, something's in your shoe and it just bugs you. Something mm. a little. It's kind of like that for his whole life, you know. Um, does that does that make sense or? Um, that's not how he appears to the world, but maybe this is, um, this is true. Yeah, he has a nice facade, but deep inside is, uh, uh, again, I see this sense of angst ah. in him. You might want to actually just kind of open up and talk to, talk to him about that. It'll really open you up or it'll actually open him up and make it okay to understand like where he is. It might be that my mother-in-law, his wife, went right after they got married, um, mm -hmm. had uh, developed cancer at a very uh, young age, and she was supposed to die at 21, and she didn't. She didn't die. She okay. went up to have three sons, but she's had several cancers over the years, and so he struggled with her health, and he's uh -oh. the 51. And now, all these years later, okay. he's um, so sick. That's the deal. So maybe that's what that deal is. There's always yeah. a sense of, like, imperfection. In yes. Does that make okay? That makes sense. That yes, that makes so sense. So that's um, so let's um, work on that. Um, in how old is he? Eighty. Very young and hearty, and was never sick. Um, no. Until he went to the doctor and. Yeah, till the last I would say like three years, right? Couple last. Um, not yeah. sure exactly how long. Yeah, I'm sensing like three. Okay. Three, three years. Um, It kind of just like came upon him. Yes, exactly. Yeah, that's why it's just like a, 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 a just a simple switch over. It wasn't like gradual; it just happened. That's exactly how it happened. It yeah. came. That's exactly what he said as well. It was so sudden. It just like took over him, basically. Yes. So again, I'm not a doctor or any type of health professional. I can only like guide or say. Uh, Tell you what I see. Okay. Let's see. I have had, gosh, like dozens of people who have been say, cured of cancer or have helped them, you know, cure themselves of cancer. Obviously, I don't do the healing or anything like that um, for them. But just opening that or allowing that space in. Also, at, at this age, you know, we always think of, say, transitioning over. Yes. So he's been thinking a lot about that as well. Um, and his wife's still around, right? Yes. Very close. There seems like they're very close. Very close. They've only been apart six nights in... 60 something yeah. years. Yeah, I see that. Um, or in 60 something lifetimes as well. <laughs> time after time yeah. after time, you know, they've come wow. together. So they know each other, you know, at a very intimate level. Yes. Beyond the physicalness of this world. So that's very nice. Um, you know, the beauty of, of, of like what I do is not just of oh, this physical form, really. And again, that's kind of what we've talked about that wave that's coming through, Carl, is that there is a sense of, say, uh, purity coming through. Mm. We don't create from the previous experiences that we've had. Because uh, th these densities that we have in this realm just won't exist in the higher realms or the future okay? of what's coming up. So what that means is what I do not only how to, in this physical form, that's actually a byproduct, but when you start to create your next life, because I see them together in their next life as well, um, but without the distortions, and I think that's that um, that issue that I was seeing, is always something like, no matter how great or perfect, you know, this relationship, there's always say something that just kind of like snaps after relationship after relationship in this case um, it's you know that uh, having that cancer at a young age and then you know living through it so yeah. the next lifetime um, again it'll be free of that little 
snag so they can come into you know their own or their truer power mm. without the snag and really like enjoy each other at a deep level. Does that make sense? Yes, that's a beautiful thought as well. Um, so they're already planning for that and I see his wife um, kind of come in and really actually smiling. Um, seems like she's always had that something going on. Yes. It's, that's kind of like stopped. Yeah. That's really a spiritual pattern. Lifetime after lifetime, there's always been, say, something going on that's like snag going on. And they can't figure out. Um, and, and it kind of disturbs your father-in-law. It's like mm -hmm. everything's perfect, but, well, you know, what the hell? You know, why is this mm -hmm. always, you know, like a nagging uh, deal? Um, that's exactly right. Yeah. So let's, uh, let's delete or remove that pattern. Um, and since, what's her name? I'm, I hate to call Marge. her his wife. Marge. Marge. So Marge, very, she was here, she'd be like really say, giggly almost, like a young girl. Uh, yeah? Mm. So, mm -hmm. Yeah, which is very nice. Um, so actually seeing her space um, again from her truer self, and that, and, that, and that's why I see her, you know, effort um, well giggle. <laughs> yes, she does. She giggles. <laughs> she, she just she just knows she that. Um, she just knows that this time. Is going to be say the last time oh. that this is going to happen, you know, where there's going to be a snag. So, very nice. Um, one thing to note, um, and I'm not saying it's going to happen in this scenario, but sometimes, you know, when people are at that age, no matter how healthy or non healthy they are, they start to see the beauty, and that's um, I'm helping them open up to the trueness or the beauty as they transition over because, again, they're at that age process. I mean, it's, it's good for anybody at any age. Yes. But uh, especially for them, they might tend to say like, get too excited and then like cross over faster. It's not other people. It's happened before. So just be aware of that. Um, huh. Just because they want to get, say, started, you know, on their new, say, journey. Um, but uh, and I'm not saying that's going to happen for these two. But uh, that is something to think about. So as we open them up, um, I don't know if you're feeling it, Beth, but is there like a flutter in your chest? Yes, I feel definitely. I wish you could see me. I am yeah. feeling that. Yeah, and you're kind of, I don't know, perspiring or getting hotter or something. Uh, definitely. Yeah. <laughs> yes, so I've seen that. Temperature change happening. Yeah. Kind of getting flush. I, nice. yeah. Yes, that's exactly right. And you can't see me exactly what I am doing. So as they say, ascend higher or um, or open up those doors. You know, there's that um, pull with for you guys as well, or with you guys. Uh, so you start to sense because you're open. So you're feeling basically what they're coming into, and it is a sense of beauty. Um, there's also that sensuality coming out of you as well because, well, um, uh, mm -hmm. in the in the physical brain, um, the sense of connecting to spirit is like overlaps the sense of like sensuality, so that's why we connect the two together. So, uh, so if that's the case, that's that you might be feeling that as well. Does that make sense to you? Yes, absolutely. Yes, yes. Everything you're saying makes sense. So good thing your husband's around. <laughs> Just, <sorry>. <laughs> <laughs> you can edit that out. <laughs> I, I will. Don't worry, I got your back. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, the byproduct of say connecting them to say the afterlife of this life is that they start to see like a truer vision of of, of who they are, what they are in physical form, like beyond say, the cancers that they have, mm. right? Yeah. So, so the time that they have left here, 
is going to be more fruitful, more enjoyable. Um, huh. And kind of brings us back to, say, the cancers. See, who knows? Stranger things have happened. See if we can kind of uh, help that go into somewhat of a remission. Because it's really not, although it's it seems like a blood type yeah. issue, it's really contained in one area. For, for him, which is actually amazing. Mm. It's kind of like the back of the heart or the lung area. I don't know if he has issues there or pain. Excuse me. Um, well, Jane, I mean, they might be picking up on me as well. Yeah. yeah. You can tell him. Well, I had, I, I have had a history, I had lung cancer, having never smoked, um, six years oh. ago. I'm fully recovered. Okay. Uh, but so. I'm, it's interesting you say lung, you know, you just even said the word lung because, I, you know, yeah. you might be also sensing, I'm sure you are, um, my story. Mm. Um, I don't know where his is housed, heart, lung, but that also makes sense to me. Okay, yeah, and sometimes I, I, I kind of mesh things together. Um, you know, your father-in-law, and you have been in different lives together in some form. So there's that connection. You probably knew that already or you felt that, yeah? Do I feel a very deep connection to him? Yes. That's true, right? Yes. Yeah. Yes. Um, and again, that's, that's, um, that comes from being together in some other form. Huh. Always kind of like a father, um, Daughter-in-law type deal, or father-daughter? Yes, it's a bit type father, deal. daughter-in-law, but, 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 but he's yeah, always. Like a second father to me. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Uh, lifetime after lifetime, by the way. Yes. Uh, wow. Wow. But. <laughs> so I think. Um, so he, since he is a caring type individual as so well, caring. He, he starts to harbor people's. Um, and I think that's why I kind of see it in him, although it might be your issue, you say a resonance or like a, particles that are left over, you know, a residue of, say, your issue in him. Hmm. Does that make sense? Yeah, yeah. I mean, I hadn't thought about that, but that's, <laughs> wow. Mm-hmm. Because mm -hmm. although I see it in you, more um, apparent, I see, there's like this space in him. Um, so if he gets, by the way, if he since those frequencies of that, of your issues are kind of melded into him, let's say, um, so he gets, say, another issue, and usually it might be around that same space. And that's kind of, like I said, unusual to have that kind of cancer, if you want to call it that. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. Just in that area. So it affects him more because that space is like sort of weak. Mm. You know, anyone, because of the frequencies that he harbors because of you. Huh. Wow. And, and that doesn't mean that you should feel sad. Maybe I worded it wrong, but it's not because of you. It's just the way he is. He just absorbs. So, um, yes. that caring. So let's get rid of that. Um, you know, and, and then being that caring feeling, you know, he's always had um, a sense of obligation. Very much so. You know, for others. Yes. Sometimes, you know, it's like, well, why can't I just like be on my own or be myself? Huh. You know, you see this, and, and it's not a bad one, but it's like lifetime after lifetime, you start to wonder. Um, you know, some people, they've had, say, a spouse that's been riddled with issues, right? And they've been a caretaker in their spouse. That's, that's the case exactly. Yeah, with, with his spouse leaves. And then that spirit, although they've loved that person, that spirit just like gets so refreshed, you know, after that person leaves. Does that make sense? Yeah. So he's like shedding that coat of, of, of that as well, of being a caretaker the next lifetime, or even the rest of it mm. is down here, um, exactly. which is really going to be fantastic. He's going to actually like really be his own self without having a conscious awareness of something else. Oh. 
yeah. even uh, just kind of tapping into them, like, uh, and you might not know this, but like mm, somewhere around that, plus or minus one or two years, he was like taking care of somebody, uh, somebody much older. So, seems mm. like, so, even at that age, he's been kind of like a caretaker. It, it, oh wow! No, I don't know, but, but that makes sense with his family. Yeah. So. So that sense of responsibility always there for me. Yes. And Jane, Jane, how are you feeling? I, I, it's, I'm very emotional when you were speaking about um, mother's giddiness, and my heart's just like, I'm definitely feeling like Yeah, because you're sensitive as I'm working, obviously, since you're here yeah. and you're feeling that. And anybody listening in or watching, you know, and even if you're not sensitive, it's still working. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm definitely feeling all the waves of, of the, the compassion. I could see. I could actually see the overlapping of Beth and her father-in-law. Yeah, so your abilities are really increased. Heat, a lot of heat. So for you, Beth, that sense of obligation to be leaving, um, since you're in that. Um, group dynamics, that will release you as well. Mm. Mm. I'm not, I don't know if you're aware, but you are sensitive to certain foods, by the way. <laughs> she definitely knows. She's <laughs> She's I know. <laughs> yes. <laughs> um, and you're still eating those foods, by the way. Uh, <laughs> so, I so think stop the that. Cult, yeah. <laughs> I'm macrobiotic. So whatever you're eating, it, it might be something, um, something that's you know like in everything. You know, sometimes corn is in everything, or huh. something genetically modified. The genetic yes. So, oh, so for you, Beth, it's plastics. Um, A lot of plastic so, foods these days. So genetically modified foods, for example, not the best for you. Any kind of genetically modified food. Right. I try to stay away from that, but I agree with you about the plastics. That's absolutely true for me. Yeah, and, and, um, and the reason why I say plastics and genetically modified food, you know, corn is used they produce corn like over 90 percent plastic they use it as yeah. plastic car parts things like that they change the structure by about 10 percent and then they use it for human mm -hmm. consumption mm -hmm. so um and then they spray petroleum yes um, um fertilizers insecticides so you're taking all that in you know so when you're eating so the more organic that you can get I do eat organically I do but, but I'm very sensitive to everything you're saying you're you, you're really picking up on something that's absolutely true about me mm -hmm. but may I share something that I'm feeling sure honey anytime uh, you know so I as I said I I had lung cancer six years ago and I feel um, cured and well but I'm feeling a really deep connection right now to my own um, lungs mm -hmm. in a yeah. deeper sort of, and I know this session isn't first and foremost about me, but I'm feeling, I don't know, feeling, um, mm -hmm. being connecting with you. Um, yes. And it started when you talked about, you know, my father in law, you asked about the lung area. And mm -hmm. okay, yeah. Um, I want to acknowledge that I'm feeling that as I'm with you. Very beautiful. So yes, you know, although say the memories of that cancer is gone, the physical memories, you know, those frequencies say like lie dormant for you, um, mm. and that's what's releasing from you. So in the next lifetime, or even in this lifetime, you don't have to have it again, or, or you don't have to create it again. Um, and then the issues that go around, 
you yeah. Know, you know that cancer, and there's a lot of emotional issues, say, uh -huh. into you attached to that. Yes. That's coming up for you. Um, Very much so. Yeah, and, and <laughs> all those things releasing for you as well. So, <laughs> Which, again, kind of goes back to you and your husband. You'll get a closer sense of each other. Mm -hmm. You can truly open up you know, like yourself. So, very beautiful. Oh, this is very powerful. Mm -hmm. Oh, thank you. I feel that relief rushing through me, Beth. You know, we can see. I can feel the tears. I can feel everything rushing through me. <laughs> Thank oh, wow, what a gift. Thank you so much. Thank you, Beth. So My father-in-law as well. Thank you. He's going to be listening to this when he can. So. Right. He can oh, that'd be fantastic. Yeah. Yeah. We'll, do, yeah, we'll have a replay on here so that anybody can listen to as often as they wish. Yeah. Beth, yeah. thank you. And Stephen, thank you both. Thank you so much, all of you. Maz, this was just beautiful. I'm so grateful. This so is glad. Great. So glad you're here. Okay, thank you. Thank you so yeah. much. Okay, and we are now uh, joining with us. We've got Pat Ganaban from Hawaii, and Pat is a friend of Jane's and mine, and we're excited to have her here with us to uh, to work with Moss. So, hi, Pat. How are you? Aloha. I miss you. <laughs> so sweet. <laughs> Aloha. You look sweet. Aloha That's to the world, the universe, everybody out there watching today. You have all my love. So, Pat, it's always so great to see your face, and thank you so much for being here. And you are coming to Hawaii. Yes, I am in Hawaii. I'm coming to your <laughs> island. You're coming to my uh, to the island of Hawaii <laughs> is what I meant to say. Yeah, I'm so yeah. glad. And Carl, I don't know if you know, but Pat was at our first mass event um, and hosted it over on Oahu, and uh, mass immediately. Uh, felt something with Pat, so I let you know, Moss. I don't know if you remember what it was like to meet Pat, but I'd love for you to share. That was an experience. Um, actually, I kind of remember. I, you know, when I'm in these states, I don't remember fully. So sorry, um, but I do remember uh, tapping into her presence. She's really nice, very beautiful, very sublime. Uh, I remember that, but what we talked about, not so. I remember. <laughs> okay, refresh our memory. I'm okay, well, like him. What I remember is that you instantly felt that Pat was from a lineage of healers. Uh, yes. That, that there was a lot of dark energy in her lineage, and it, that dark energy of the lineage kept Pat from stepping into her own power of her healing abilities. And so I once you I, began to work with just, her, um, you said you said that her her. Up, yeah. Where she was, I, I, don't, I don't want to say level, but where she was was so high that it was like you know pushing a finger through a piece of tissue paper that it would just and then everything would open up for her mm -hmm. and then it would be instant. Like I have like Jane Sibbett had a lot of stuff she had to clear up, but with Pat she was so clean it was super mm -hmm. simple for you to work with her and then immediately she began doing stuff. So that's what I saw when I was in Oregon. Very nice. Yeah, and then I kind of remember, um, you know, uh, because the Hawaiians, they have this certain culture where they always want to hang out with their dead or hold on to their dead. I remember that part. <laughs> so I helped her release that. I don't know if you remember that part. Uh, yes. But yeah. Yeah. Um, the old culture, the old lineage, you know, of keeping the dead around. Uh, in fact, you know, when I first came into Hawaii, that was the first time I stepped on, on Hawaii. I, I, there was this density or heaviness, and I didn't quite know what that was. And until I figured it out, it was really a lot of, say, dead people hanging out. So just hanging out there, I helped, like, Pat free a lot of that culture. Um, a lot of people, actually. Do you remember also with this event, uh, there was a woman, and Pat, I, I don't know if she was a friend of yours, but she certainly was an acquaintance eventually because... She had so many entities inside of her, like hundreds, that you actually asked Pat to come and assist you. Oh, yeah. she yeah. was the no, exorcist no. woman. <laughs> Do you remember that, Pat? Yeah, I don't know how I you remember. forget. Maybe you want That's to tell the story? Weird, uh, so we come I here, and I came, and I took your camera video thing. I don't know who she was. Oh. I, I don't either, but um, 
Well, I, I remember her because you know it, it was so vivid and really scared scared me out of my pants. Um, and that's why I brought Patton is you know when you're delving into these entities, it is it, this was like a, it, it was a real exorcism, and you know she came in with some um, uh, stomach issues, and as I you know worked on her stomach, all these like dark entities started coming out of her, like. She had like packed them in, and I've never seen anything like that before. And you know, being a computer guy, I'm going, you know, uh, I don't believe in that stuff. But you know, when I saw it in her, I'm going, dang, what is going on? And then her shirt started like rippling up as these things started coming through, like physically, just like moving, like wind. Yeah, like wind coming through through her shirt. I'm going, wow, what is that? You know, and you know, the atmosphere of the room. I think the temperature, there was a temperature change. I don't know, Pat, if you remember. Yeah, there was. You should have seen me outside of the in the waiting room. Yeah. She like, ooh, what is he doing to her back there? <laughs> <laughs> Moss came out and told me, come, 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 come. You got to see this. Yeah. And there was this, again, a temperature change in the room. Yeah. Uh, um, I mean, and then cold. she started coming in like this, you know, like the... But she was like leaning so far back, like to a point where she'd fall over backwards if nothing was holding her. And nothing was holding her. And I, to this day, you know, you could kind of see like something maybe like holding her arms, you know, like ropes around her arm, just kind of holding her back like this, just like this. And all these entities just leaving her face started to transform into those entities um, as they were leaving. So that was like my first real exorcism. So Moss, that's a pretty atypical scenario, or is it? Do a lot of people have entities attached to them? Um, they do have entities attached to them, but not at this level. Yeah, that was pretty. This was like a like a real exorcism. And so when when those entities leave, as and Pat got to witness at least the effects when when she was filming a little bit. Well, Pat, did you see any of, them, or did you feel any of those the darkness? I, or I felt them. Yeah. I saw them and then when I, and it was strange because I did the video with Moss's camera mm -hmm. and when Moss tried to go back and retrieve that video, you just couldn't find it anywhere on, on your phone, yeah? No. Yeah, it's just like it just disappeared. I went, I know I was recording. I know what the word REC means. Yeah, I know. I was recording no, and it just vanished. Yeah, and, and I was recording and uh, there's only like a small clip of the video when we first started on my phone, nothing else. Yeah, and that, but you know, to answer Master's question, when when he told me to come and I opened the door and I stood there, all I saw was this great big bubble come over me. Yes. Come, watch and see this, but don't worry, you're going to be protected. I, uh, so I just, I don't know if it was Moss protecting me or it just instantaneously, like a golden curtain. Like the curtain I told you I keep seeing all the time, the golden curtain. So, and, and then she came back the second time when you came back again. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so she that, was much clearer, but still a lot she of still things. still howled. Yeah, I remember she was still yeah. howling. So what happened, Moss? How did they get back into her? Oh, the second time around... Remember she was doing that um, circle thing? That's right. Remember? Because I go, God, there's something that that you're doing that comes in. And she goes, uh, no, we're just doing this round, like this circle meditation that we do that where we call in like spirits to help us out. And I'm going, well, those aren't the spirits that you want to call in. So, you know, I released them, but then she kept doing the circle meditation where they call in entities, whatever, what have you. Um, and you got, just for people who do shamanism and things like that, you guys have to be strong, you know, internally to do things like that. Otherwise, you get errant spirits just, like, jump into you. Because they love the flesh. Is there a protection that people that that are doing that kind of work should do? I mean, how, how, how can we discern? She clearly didn't discern that she was. Right. Um, yes, and unknowingly, you know, obviously, if you knew what was happening, you'd never allow these spirits to come into you. Um, but unknowingly, they seem friendly at first, but then after a while, they just start, you know, holding on to you and distorting your your, your pattern. 
Um, there is a protection becoming aware, but the best thing actually is to be connected to pure source so much that you don't have to worry about that. And yeah, that actually went through my mind too, because as these spirits came up, um, you know, it, it, it was it was amazing. I said, God, you know, I hope they don't say come into me because I've had that. Tr they've tried to come into me, but not at this level. And one of them turned around. And it's like you don't have to worry because you're at at a level that we just honor you. And I'm going, what? You know, I, I didn't understand what that meant, but now I understand. It's like they kind of see where you are at the level that you are, and they interact with you at that level. Mm -hmm. So. For protection, you know, although you might fake that you're strong and all that, but internally they see everything about you. They scan you, um, and they see at the, the power level you are. So, um, kind of like do you, I don't know if you guys watch that show, maybe you, Carl. Goku, I forgot the. They have power levels. It's a Japanese cartoon. Yeah, My kids watch it. <laughs> uh, but anyway, they show the power level that everybody's is at. Mm -hmm. They sense the power level, and then they go, oh, okay. So it's kind of, it was similar to that. And that's what entities do. So to protect yourself, again, wrap yourself like patas, um, you know, in that, in that bubble. I don't know if I created that for you or you probably have created that yourself, Pat. But just being yeah, together, you and I. How it happened, but I just thank you for not letting nothing come to me. <laughs> yes. <laughs> So, I, so I don't know how it happened. It just I was just walking down the hallway and boom, it came down. And you know what? I was not afraid. Mm -hmm. I was like, wow. Yeah, that was crazy. Awesome. So, so, so Moss, right now, how what, what are you sensing in Pat? Pat, um, just kind of tapping into her. You know, there's really um, not a lot I can tap into because the history, say that was there, has been deleted. So I just see like freshness in her. Um, I work similar to say, you know, files on your on your on your hard drive, you know, and that's how I tap into people. And for example, the last the last uh, call that we did, it was Beth, right? Mm -hmm. um, I could kind of scan in and I go, and you know how you tap on on especially now with the touch screens, you can tap on a certain image or file, and if you want more information on that file, you just tap on it again and you get a drop down list of all the history logs, that's what I do, that, or that's what I see. Um, and to, say, change somebody's future, right, or current life, I, I can go ahead and delete those files for you. So you start recreating new ones. So with Pat, I really don't see much there anymore, just more of a freshness and just more of a state of being. Although there are certain files being created, um, but they're all, you know, like new, they're fresh, um, no distortions really that I can like pick up. Well, it's the creation part. How do you create new files? How do I create new files? <laughs> yeah, that was a, okay, we have to recreate things and I'm just, oh, well, how do you do that? And then well, I, I did that 21 day integration with your friend Daniel. Okay. Yeah, he said, we're always creating it. So I thought, so I thought yes. are creating things. Um, you know, the, the creation of files actually happens when there's nothing there. And, the, and this is very important. Um, I don't, like, um, transpose anything of my beliefs or ideas into you. And, and that's why I usually I leave that part blank for you. As I, as I delete them, um, your default space or the memories of how you were start coming into you. Does that make sense? So there's, yeah. like, a backup file for you of your the original backup source, mm -hmm. right, of your true life without the distortions of this lifetime, previous lifetime, those backup files start coming into play. And that's how you really create, or that's how you really should create files. Uh, and I don't mess around with that. Uh, people who want to, say, create certain areas of their life, you know, well, I want this, 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 you know, um, they'll start to tend. To, they'll tend to realize that that's not the way to go to go either. You know, they really want to say leave that space open and let the default files come into you, and then you get some amazing results. I mean, take a look at my life. Is that what you would call the root files? Every what? computer has root files. Root. Root files. Yeah. Yes. Yes. We all have root files. We all have default files. 
that come into us in physical form, um, which kind of opens up a really interesting question. A lot of people go, well, why is my life the way it is? You know, why do I have so many issues or whatever? Um, um, and, you know, can we edit our lives and so on? And Or is life just, you know, just in concrete and you can't change it? And, and all of those are actually true. Um, um, but over 90% of what happens to you is at a default level. So it just happens to you. The other 10% is there for you to become awakened. So you can uh, take advantage of the other 90% that's there and start recreating your life from not a default file. Different from the root files, by the way. Um, these default files are usually from like past life experiences, traumas, great experiences, whatever, that's carried over. So these patterns that we create this lifetime. Um, the root files are your original true files that are there for you, the truest essence of you. Um, and that's what comes through. But the default files that come through for most people, again, most people don't become awakened enough or they don't have an experience that they go, wow, I can change my life and I can say delete those root files. And then, then there's people like me that go, oh, this is your default file, let's just delete it. And then something else pops in, a truer essence of you pops in. Did that make sense to you guys? Yes. Or was it too tough? Oh, it makes a lot of sense. Okay. Our yeah. purest potential to create yes. this place. Our purest potential. Yes, exactly. Potential. Yeah, that. and that's why I don't, um, uh, I like goal setting. But most of us, again, aren't at a place to really set goals. So, kind of leave that, leaving that blank for us. Like, that's it. something that we that we will work on perhaps in Hawaii too. Is that you'll just help clear that space for us so that we can yes. be living our potential. Yes. Yeah, and in Pat's case, you know that space is actually clear, and she might sense a feeling of say emptiness in her or or something like that. It's like, well, what is there? Um, that's because um, she's getting say ready to integrate. You know, there's still some cultural things that she holds on to. You know, some say physical things that she holds on to as being a human. But, you know, as those leave, she'll start to get a truer sense of why we walk on the earth the way we do. And that's where, like, I guess a lot of our abilities come in. A truer knowing of who we are at a higher level will come into you, Pat. Um, that sense of now what type, you know, attitude will, will get removed and you'll start to see, you know, um, well, why we're here. Right? Got it. <laughs> so you're in training mode, Pat. Yeah, that's what I forget. I'm in training mode, so you can't, yes. cannot argue with me about it. I just go, whatever, I'm learning. There you go. <laughs> I'm learning. I'm baby stepping over here. Actually, I do feel like a baby. Yeah, no. it is like a baby because it, everything's so new, you know, although you're in the same environment. Everything just looks so new. You start to see how things work. You start to see the frequencies of. I don't know if you can do that, Pat. I think you can. Like when you look at something, can you see the frequencies of what's created? Or see and feel. Yes. Oh yeah, my gosh, Pat and I were at the beach <laughs> last time, and she was and people were walking down the beach, <laughs> commenting on the different people. Like, oh my gosh, they just were kissing. Oh my god. <laughs> I was like, oh. So yeah. <laughs> yeah, so the this, late because they were having a honeymoon time. Okay, fine. <laughs> <laughs> Love you. So. But you know, getting back to the part that I I am letting go of, I think I had mentioned it before. I don't know to you, Jane, but it was uh, carrying on the responsibility of all of this because and you're right. In the past, in my ancestral life, I've seen this gift mm -hmm. be used, and I don't want to be like that. No, I want to help people. So my biggest fear was, I don't want to go down that dark road like they did. I don't care if it's in my DNA. It has to change. Right. And I'm hoping that moss, you know, Turn the knob a little, fine tune it. What frequency should I be on now? And right. That uh, kind of stuff. 
yeah, helping people shouldn't become a burden, really. You know, it should enhance you, your life, the others that you uh, help, right? Otherwise, you're not really helping them, probably. No. Really Most of the time, they don't even know that it's there anyway, which is fine with me. That's true. <laughs> that is so true. Well, Pat, you help a lot of people I know just on the Internet. When I, whenever I connect with you and when people see you, they are always so happy to see you, too. So I'm so glad you're going to be joining us in Hawaii. Yeah, I look forward to it. And on Kauai, too. Lucky girl. So Pat's really, yeah. really great. Well, thank so I just, I, I know that we have gone very long today. This has been. I'm sorry, so Carl. Amazing. Oh. Yeah, it's amazing, amazing. So thank you. Thank you, Pat, for coming. I so appreciate it. And yeah, thank you, Pat. It was great, Thanks, to, Pat. Uh, great to see you and great to have you on. And um, uh, thank you to Moss and Jane. This was, this was wonderful. I want to do this again. Because okay. this is this is great. I don't, you know. Sitting here and my frequency energy level is just floating up and up and up, going on. <laughs> <laughs> Can you feel that goop hog? <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> and Pat, we'll see. I'll see you on Facebook, and we'll talk more about what we were experiencing today. Because just seeing you and and Mox and I'm just like feeling all of his work, his frequency work still going through and flushing. It's just. It's so and even the listeners just listening in or watching, they'll. Um, again, they'll get that effect as well. So. Right. So go to masajadi.com, M-A-S-S-A-J-A-D-Y.com for more information about the Hawaii retreat, the 21-day meditations, and all the other wonderful things that you can be a part of. Yes. So, and thank you, thank you, thank you, Carl, so much for having us. Mm -hmm. Thanks, Carl. All right. Uh, all right. Great to see everybody. Aloha. And we'll talk soon. Okay, Sounds good, guys. Okay. Take care. All Aloha. Right. Uh, Aloha. Bye. Bye. So that was uh, Pat Ganaban and, uh, and also, obviously, uh, Jane, uh, my co-host, and, and healer Mas Sajadi. And, well, I know he doesn't agree with the idea of healer, but um, he is, he's actually quite extraordinary. And the way that he works and what it is that, that he does for people is really, truly amazing. So thanks for joining us today on Superpowers, and we will see you next time.